So for me, the driver battle is a done deal. There's absolutely nothing to separate the top brands right now. But when it comes to the long end of the bag, well, things are most definitely starting to hot up a little. And as golfers, what that means is we have a huge amount of product to choose from right now. And whilst there are plenty of golfers out there who still dispute there is very little difference between one hybrid and another, one fairway wood or another, I can assure you that is complete nonsense. And in today's video, we'll be looking at two or what I consider to be the easiest to use fairway woods that I have ever come across. We're gonna collect some dry ball data. We're gonna find out if there's any differences, although there are many similarities, and also I suppose ultimately decide which one of these two is best. And what is it that determines which is best in a head-to-head? -head? Because let's be honest, ultimately, we are all looking for potentially different things. There's one high ball flight. So I will be highlighting what I think each club does particularly well, perhaps the areas that they disappoint in, and ultimately what separates these two clubs in today's video. But first of all, what are the two clubs I'm looking at? And why do I think that they should be going in a head-to-head -head with each other? Well, because I believe these are two of the most forgiving fairways on the market introduced in 2023. They have a huge amount of similarities and it starts with the way they look and in particular, the profile and the head shape. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Hot Golf, the online golf megastore bringing you the hottest deals in golf and of course the clubs featured in today's video. Find the link to the Hot Golf website in the description below and check out some incredible giveaways and offers. So what are the two clubs in question? Well, the one you've seen me hit and heard me hit so far has been from TaylorMade. It is in fact from their HD lineup it is a five wood and uh, it is an incredibly versatile, user friendly and forgiving fairway wood. And then on the other hand, the one that you haven't seen me hit quite yet, but you will do very shortly, is from the Ping G430 lineup. It's a five wood, it's also 19 degrees, which is identical to that of the TM product. But this is the SFT model. And first of all, just look at these two things at address and they are so, so similar in terms of their shape and profile and they're very much different to the majority of head shapes that we're seeing in fairway woods right now. And that being they're very sort of flat, they're very low profile, and they're very elongated. Well, why does that matter? Well, first of all, that elongated element allows manufacturers to push CG just as far back as they possibly can. And that CG being placed back, that additional bit of loft at being 19 degrees means one thing, and that's the ball is gonna launch extremely high, something that many of us need, that kind of help and assistance with this type of club in hand. So what I wanna see is does that ring out in terms of performance? But then have a further look at these things because they are very different visually other than their shape. And from a shelf appeal pers perspective, there are a lot of differences. I'm not drawn one way or the other, in terms of how I view it on the shelf. But where I do see a difference is in terms of the crown, and I probably leaning towards that matte finish of the Ping lineup this year. I'm not too sure why it was eliminated from the driver in terms of stealth too. It wasn't in the fairway woods last year, but I really am drawn to that more muted, flat, matte crown that I'm seeing in these fairway woods right now. So that's how they look. Let's see how they do in terms of performance. Now the SFT model which I'm going to switch up to from Ping is very different from that of the Max product and the LST in terms of that profile. So that again is a big key issue when you're choosing which club you want to use. And uh, I'm a lover of that sort of flat, uh, more lower profile fairway wood at address. So let's give this one a whack and first of all pay attention to the sound maybe. Now again, the one thing you'll see me doing with all of these shots that I hit, hopefully if I don't thin one, is look upwards because these things launch extremely high, as they're intended to do, but perhaps almost uh, to a height and a launch angle that you wouldn't expect to see from a five fairway wood. Let's hit one more, and again, just pay attention if we can pick anything up in terms of that sound. Well, that's, again, it's ridiculous in terms of the ball flight and you'll see in the dry ball data that's been collected yes they launch high they spin high-ish but 
they still carry a fair old distance with a nice descent angle and we'll get to that and I'm seeing some great ball flights really impressed. I said pay attention to the sound because we're going to switch up. It's very difficult to get any sort of pickup in here and whether we notice it or not is uh, well you tell me. But we're into the TM product and again just pay attention to the sound for a second. Now, if I'm honest with you, I'm going to hit another ball. I've hit three really solid balls um, that I'm really pleased with in terms of performance. If anything, I got a little bit of mat before ball there, which you may have picked up on, which would ruin any audio that I'm trying to get you to listen to. Right, that's a crisper strike. The one thing that I have really applauded pinging in terms of the G430 lineup is just how much better their wood sound compared to the predecessors like the G425. But there's no getting away from the fact that when you hit them side by side with other brands, in this case the TM product, there is still a noticeable difference in that it's maybe not such just a sound issue, there's just a harder face that is on those G430s. So again, when you've got products that are very, very similar, you're looking at small differentials that separate them in terms of the choice you're going to make. So I'm leaning towards the looks visually at address of the ping in terms of that matte crown, but then from a sound and feel perspective, I'm back into that Stealth 2 model. So there are a number of key areas that will guide you one way or another, let alone performance. Now, as ever, it's at this point in the video where I ask you to make your decisions. What are you seeing in terms of these uh, two products? Which would you prefer from a visual perspective? Are either of them on the hit list this year for you to try and potentially put in the bag? Second thing is, if you're enjoying the video, please hit that like button. And the final request is that uh, if you're not subscribed already, then please con consider doing so. It is free of charge. It costs you nothing, but it's a huge help to me and to the channel. Right. Back to the testing. One further element to discuss at that sort of address position is forget the matte crown is the face itself and the loft that each of them presents and they're very visibly different. And for me, again, I'd lean towards that ping. I've already commented about how they've got the sort of white score lines either side of the center of the club face. Then there's the void, simple white dot is your alignment. Then you look at the TM alongside right now and you'll notice that it's got a much darker front face to it. You don't see as much of the face visually from above and I think that's perhaps a negative because what I'm looking for is some kind of encouragement in terms of seeing loft which again helps me mentally at least process the fact that I think this ball is going to go up in the air. So at the address position, not only the matte crown but I really also do like the fact that they present so much loft by that sort of colour difference that uh, Ping have adopted with the face of the product as well. And I think that's an important thing because that's ultimately all about confidence. But what am I actually seeing in terms of performance differences? Well, the answer to that question is very little. Like I said, for me, there is a noticeable difference in terms of sound. And if you're wondering, that was the ping club I've just hit once again, a really, really solid ball. Straight flight technology, well, I'm hitting balls pretty decent right now. What I can't, and I'm going to switch back into this whilst I carry on talking, is that honestly, I can't separate the two in terms of performance. They do exactly what both of them are intended to do. And like I said, that's launched the ball very, very high indeed. Ball speeds seem really good in the fact that that ball is firing off both of the faces. And like I said, the only things that separate them are sound and some visible differences that uh, would sway me one way or another. But what I'm not disappointed is with performance. So what I'll do, I'll leave it there, I think. I'll go through the dry ball data that I've collected and uh, give you a final verdict and maybe choose which one I would put in the bag. Well, I collect plenty of dry ball data in head to head. There's often elements that you can pick up on in terms of trying to separate clubs by their performance. What I've seen today is two clubs that are designed to do exactly the same thing even so much like I said as their head profile is designed for a typical performance being like I said CG back high launch low profile they're so similar these two clubs but when I put the dry ball data up you'll see how similar they are in terms of performance which is quite a shocker because quite honestly I don't think I've ever seen where uh, every parameter 
has been almost identical and uh, it's impossible to split these two. Every shot that I hit, and when I switched out when I was talking to you on camera, every shot that I hit, I wouldn't have been able to tell which was which in terms of what I was seeing in terms of ball flight out there. They were doing identical things. And uh, as I said, for one, repeating myself, the reasons I would choose one over the other would be to do with the way they sound and feel, the way they look at a dress, and like I said, the loft that's presented. I'm leaning towards, like I said, the Ping product, if I'm honest with you, simply because of that matte crown, more loft presented at a dress. They're probably the reasons that I would lean towards that. So it's purely an aesthetics thing, uh, because like I said, I couldn't choose one over the other in terms of performance. But the importance of the video is this, is that I said, are all products the same? If I put these two products in line with, if I went for the sort of um, Stealth Plus lineup and got a five wood on here, you would not see the same performance of what you've seen just now in terms of that HD lineup. They do very, very different things. And like I said, that's important for you to recognize when you're considering buying clubs now is that a five fairy wood and a five fairy wood are not necessarily exactly the same performance wise. They are in this case, this style of club. But if you separate two, like I said, Stealth Plus and this, you will see some incredible differences in terms of the performance. So it's important that you try and you tell your custom fitter exactly what it is that you're looking for in terms of performance and the yardage gaps you're looking to fill. And that way you might be directed to the right type of fairway wood, the right type of hybrid to fit in your bag and help you make this game just a little bit easier. Right, that is me done, another video complete. And um, let me know what your thoughts are. Which would you choose? And uh, I will see you all tomorrow night. Thanks for watching.